Hello everyone, I'm Ratrani Devna, an image consultant and fashion stylist. Today, I'm in conversation with Sara Morovic. She's a fashion designer and buyer from New Zealand, and she has over eight years of experience in the fashion industry. Today, we will be discussing about London and New Zealand fashion and how she grabbed opportunities. There's so many important things to learn from this video. And Sara is New Zealand, so if you are difficult to understand her English, तो आप डिस्क्रिप्शन में बुलेट पॉइंट्स को रेफर करें मैं उनके आंसर्स को सब बुलेट पॉइंट्स में मेंशन किया है डिस्क्रिप्शन में हाय सारा वेलकम टू माय इंसाइटफुल सेशन आई जस्ट लाइक टू से थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी अम फर्स्टली इट्स अ ऑनर टू बी हियर या एंड आई एम एम सो ग्लैड दैट यू कुड टेक आउट सम टाइम एंड डू दिस विद विद मी एंड प्रोवाइड योर एक्सपीरियंस एंड नॉलेज विद द जर्नी दैट यू हैव इन योर फैशन करियर सो हाउ डिड यू डिसाइड टू बी अ फैशन डिजाइनर एंड फ्रॉम वेयर डिड यू लर्न और गेट योर डिग्री फ्रॉम So basically how I decided that I'd like to be involved in fashion or a fashion designer is that when I was 14 I learned how to sew and for me it was fascinating that you could take two pieces of fabric and with just with a couple of seams and you could create like a garment and to me the possibilities were were endless I, I loved that <laughs> and my mind still loves that So um I think the first thing that I made was like a, just a little tote bag and I was like oh well if I can make a little tote bag what else can I make so I started um uh, being interested in fashion when I was 14 to see you know what you could sew what you could pattern make and then I ended up studying at um AUT which is Auckland University of Technology um mm-hmm. in New Zealand and I ended up graduating at the uh, Uh, top of my year in 2013 and 13 wow. so um really really enjoyed it and i just really like the technical aspects so that's kind of what got me into fashion in the first place <laughs> oh wow that's amazing so i remember once you telling me that you moved to london and uh, would you like to share that experience with us how was how was the journey yeah, sure yeah So um so I am originally from New Zealand and um so after graduating I worked for a company here but more on marketing and production side even though I trained in fashion so I decided to move to London to for my career um but I had some family in Southampton but I had no connection to London whatsoever so Southampton is 2 hours south of of London okay. um so i stayed in a hostel for 6 months um because i didn't have any connections or anything like that in London so um and that was including fashion connections so i had to sort out myself those connections so that was probably one of the biggest challenges i faced in London um so what i did is i had my portfolio ready in terms of physical and online mm-hmm. and um i googled what fashion recruiters there were in london so um not normal recruiters ones that specialized in fashion mm-hmm. so i sent them an email just saying um i'm new to london i've just moved over um i'm keen to get into the industry in an entry level job do you have anything going and so they got me to send them my portfolio and then we had a meeting and um they said that we would basically place you in stuff that we thought you would be suitable for but in the meantime would you want to do temp work for us like temporary casual work and because i moved over without a job i said i said yes and um they they put me in some really interesting stuff so i ended up um doing a day for Givenchy but like in the perfume department mm-hmm. and that was really fun um that was in central london and then i ended up tempting for netta porter wow. which is like one of the biggest uh online retailers of like luxury goods but i was in the returns department um so all of the stuff that had gone to photo shoot would come back and we'd have to almost like scan it in and you were handling like hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of these like luxury product oh, which was amazing and um so i worked there and then um by doing that as well in my free time i was trying to apply for every job possible to try and get into the design area and um i must have applied for 
over a hundred jobs and got so many rejections back. Like I got, I got more rejections than successful um, because it's, it's a very hard, you know, to get your first foot in the door is, is quite hard. Um, until one day I got um, an email back with an interview. And so that was kind of my first step, but you had to really look into um, getting those connections and making those connections yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think fashion industry is more about the connections uh, first. Yeah, no, definitely. I totally agree. And I have a lot of um, people ask me, you know, how do you even start if you don't have those connections? And it, you can do simple things like, you know, go to fashion events alone. Um, because uh, I went to one alone in New Zealand. It was like a magazine talk and I ended up meeting a freelance photographer a fashion photographer and she ended up um photographing my stuff for free so she would get the photos for her portfolio and I got them for mine and I would have never made that connection if I didn't go to that event alone um so that's a, a very big thing is to meet those people and just start talking you just it's scary but you need to put yourself out there <laughs> absolutely absolutely I think we also connected over our Instagram interest of providing the fashion knowledge so we also made a connection over there yeah exactly and you just it just spirals once you meet one it yeah it just and then that your network just grows and grows which is really really lovely yes absolutely so how how different is New Zealand fashion from London fashion I would say quite different. <laughs> um, so we're also like a season behind as well. So whenever it's summer here, it's winter in, in London. It's completely different seasons. But because London is such a big hub for fashion, um, you can get away with wearing the most, um, you know, uh, outlandish thing and no one would really, like, think anything different because um it's just a wonderful place that you can just wear anything. And, and obviously London is um, where some of the best fashion is. So it's almost like cutting edge. Um, whereas in New Zealand, I find we're probably a bit like on the conservative side. Um, yeah, so we probably wear like a lot of like dark colours in, in winter and we don't want to be too far outside, outside the box. So it is, it is different. Um, but we still have a fashion scene in New Zealand, but obviously it's, it's nowhere near as big as, as London being one of the hubs of fashion. All right. All right. So um, what was your journey like from being a fashion designer to a fashion buyer? What were the knowledge skills that you had to acquire to become a fashion buyer? Yeah, so with fashion buying, I kind of just stumbled into it. So with that job that I finally got in London, um, I started out as a um, design assistant, then I went to head of design, and then I managed to become the chief creative officer of that particular business. And um, from that particular role, you had to be very um, analytical in terms of, because you had to give design direction, but also it's a fashion business you need to make money you need to know what's going to sell and you know looking at sales figures in terms of um uh, what your customers are going to like what maybe will be sitting on the shop floor may not sell um so through learning all the analytical figures with fashion um in terms of designing because learning those sale figures actually influences your design decisions yeah. so say for example if you if none of your lilac colors sold um you would look at that but okay we're not going to put any more lilac in, into the collection because our customers don't like it yeah. so from learning that knowledge as a fashion designer um I could kind of translate that into being a fashion buyer where you do have to look at the um, analytical um, sales figures to say, you know, how many tops do we have in the range? How many are selling? How many bottoms do we have in the range? Do we have too much? Um, do they like this particular trim? How fast did it sell? Um, so one is very creative, but you still use those sales figures to um, create like beautiful collections. And fashion buying is more um, very analytical in terms of... Um, it's number driven because um, a lot of people don't realize that behind fashion is quite numbers like with Excel spreadsheets of, um, you know, oh, did we sell a lot of size 14s or a lot of size 12s? And then you 
um, put a ratios behind that in terms of how many you're actually going to buy versus mm -hmm. how many you can sell. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do you think it's important for a fashion designer or a fashion buyer to learn Excel as well to the core? Uh, yes. So um, in terms of fashion design, I don't think you'd need to learn it too, too much. But in terms of fashion buying, a lot of it is, is spreadsheets. So as long as you can do like the basic things in terms of average out numbers and some numbers and things like that, it should give you a rough idea in terms of uh, what to buy. And it's just how you um, arrange that data, really. Um, but in terms of fashion buying, you're more likely to be staring at an Excel spreadsheet um, to when you look at garments on the wall to pick and to buy, you look at your numbers first on your laptop and be like, oh, well, they really liked um, that drop shoulder with a, a cow neck. Um, so we're going to buy more of this. Right. That makes sense. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, how, so you know the market in uh, New Zealand, you know the market in London. So how competitive is the job industry over there? Like how easily you can get a job? Uh, in New Zealand or in London? In New Zealand, because I know the struggle you had in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, New Zealand, I think it's still a little bit of a struggle because um, because the market is a lot smaller. So it's a lot competitive as well because there's, you know, lots of people still studying fashion design and getting degrees. But then in terms of actually designers here, um, I would say there's, there's not a lot of jobs here um, because a lot of the designers are the founders of the company. So if you founded it, you, you're normally the designer in terms of bigger like designer brands. Um, whereas if it's a big corporation, you know, when people get in those jobs, they don't really leave. <laughs> so it, it can be a little bit of, of, of a struggle. And um, that's why some people go overseas or they go into other areas of fashion, not just, just designing. Right. So in terms of London, uh, how open or accepting they were because you moved from New Zealand. So were they worried that you will not understand London fashion? Uh, I definitely got that. So I had a um, interview um, with, a, with a small brand and that was basically one of the kickbacks that I got was uh, you've got no experience in the UK fashion uh, you know, it's very different to London fashion, which, which it is. And so that's the reason why I didn't get that particular job. Um, because uh, they they said that I didn't really have enough experience to know what the UK customer would like. And, you know, she, she was right. I, I didn't, but I wanted to learn. So, um, yeah, I think you just have to keep, you've got to keep going. You can't let rejection, um, you know, make you stop. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's things you just have to keep going, making those connections and eventually something will stick. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, apart from having a creative eye for design uh, products, what, e what are the other aspects do you keep in mind as a buyer? As a buyer? So um, really with being a buyer, it is about that, about your data. It is about um, previous seasons. So if you're buying, say, for winter, say this mm -hmm. year, then you need to know how your winter performed last year. Um, so, uh, you know, did you sell um, all of your, your cow neck tops? And if you did, oh, how many is left in the business? Do we have enough to buy more? Mm -hmm. um, and so really it's about recognizing those numbers and how they translate into what you're actually going to buy for this season. Um, but with COVID and um, the delays in terms of shipping um, and uh, people not wanting to come out in the shops as much. Um, so that can make it hard for, you know, um, uh, for, for stock levels and things like that. But in terms of buying, it's been able to look at the sale figures and actually translate that into, into what you're going to buy. But also for fashion designing, as, as well as having like a creative eye and um, knowing colors, fabrics, silhouettes. I think it's really important as a fashion designer to also know your sale figures from a previous season because customers are telling you every single day what yeah. they like and what they don't like with their wallets, right? So you need to listen to them 
as, as well as um, providing, you know, the next season trends and, and colors and silhouettes. It's all about your customer at the end of the day is for what actually are they going to buy from you. So. True. So uh, tell me that you have progressed so much in your career. Apart from having that creativity and eye for detail, what other uh, skills a person needs to have in the fashion industry? In terms of in the fashion industry and design, it does really help if you have like pattern making skills or at least you know a little bit of construction of a garment. You don't necessarily have to know how to pattern make a garment, but if you know how things are put together in terms of seaming, um, in terms of designing, when you design something, you actually know that it could possibly be made. Right. Um, if you don't have a little bit of that technical knowledge and you say you want to put something on the front, but it, it's impossible, it would be hard for a supplier or a factory at that point to actually make what you've designed. So having that little bit basic knowledge of how garments are actually shown together or knitted together really helps with the design process because when you're doing all your developments, you can look at it and say, is, is it actually possible or how can I make it better or easier or even more cost effective? Because um, what you design, everything you put on a garment adds extra cost, you know, to your buy price. And eventually that's going to go to the customer in terms of the retail price. Yeah. So if you have a, um, a uh, what is it, a price um, area, I would say like £20 to £30, that's retail price, if that's what your customers are comfortable to buy, then you normally know what your target price will be for your garments with the factories. So if you keep designing a lot of things on top of it, it'll get more expensive. So also having that knowledge about designing within your constraints really helps. <laughs> I think it's an absolute uh, like detailed point that you have mentioned over here because I know how buying works, but the the details that you add to it is is commendable. I understood buying a little bit more today. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> that's the thing is that with all the design elements, you don't realize that it could add on quite a lot in terms of cost prices. And then that will add on, you know, to your, your retail price at the end of the day. So it's, yeah. yeah. And um, so now uh, last question, but not the least, what <laughs> advice would you give to the young budding fashionistas? Oh, um, so uh, two pieces of advice. <laughs> so um, the first would be um, to don't let rejection stop you, especially when you're first starting out like I did. I got over 100 rejection emails and letters <laughs> to say, you know, like, thank you, but no, thank you. Um, so just don't let that deter you. Keep, keep going. And then the other thing is don't be scared to put yourself out there. So go to those fashion events alone, make those connections, you know, even write to the people that you want to work for, the brands or designs that you look up to. Um, so when I was looking for another job in the UK, um, I had actually physically printed out my portfolio and um, I had gone onto LinkedIn and I typed in the brands that I really, really liked. And um, I looked up the people who worked there. So like the head of designers and um, the you know, chief creative officers and things like that. So I got an envelope and put the portfolio inside, attentioned it to them, got the um, head office address from the internet and said confidential and then posted it to them. And that actually ended up landing me a couple interviews um, because wow. it bypassed HR, um, you know, who filters off all like the job applicants. And then it kind of showed that you put a lot of effort into it, but it only really cost me a postage stamp and it got straight into the hands of the designers and um, that's probably one of the number one things that got me uh, those connections so that would also be a piece of advice is you know um, putting your portfolio onto an email can easily just be filed or deleted actually send them your physical copy and that they have it in front of them 
Wow, that's this is really a piece of advice that even I never thought of. This is really, really commendable. <laughs> so thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for doing this and taking out time for us. Because I am sure our viewers will enjoy this conversation and they will have a lot to take in. Well, thank you so much for having me. Honestly, um, it's a real honor to come and talk to you today. So I've really, really enjoyed it, and you know, it's lovely to. And to meet you and to build this connection as well. So yeah, it's lovely. Yes, I think we should do this quite often and talk about topics that we know and you know provide that information to our viewers. Yeah, I mean definitely, I'd definitely be up for that. And uh, I think our viewers would find little pieces of nuggets of information that they would find quite useful. And that's you know the reason why I definitely started. Um, uh, fashion industry secrets and I'm, I'm sure that's why you started um, yours as well so um, it's nice to help other people who are starting that that journey as, as well yes absolutely so thank you so much Sarah thank you so much hey I hope you have enjoyed this video and gained a lot of information if you have any further question on fashion designing or buying for me or for Sarah do let me know in the comments Thank you for watching.